This is a question that I get asked a lot. How do I build an ideal training rotation? Now, there are two sides to this beautiful sport of running that we love. There is the performance side, and then for many of us, there is the hobby side. So building the rotation is really where we can bridge these two worlds, right? The performance and the fun, and get a well-rounded collection of shoes that work for us in keeping us healthy, that execute on helping us maintain our training, and also that excite us and inspire inspire us to get out the door each day. So in this video, I'll dive into how to build an ideal training rotation, starting off for people who want a one shoe rotation, then all the way up to managing a five or six shoe rotation. Before we get into it today, if you haven't checked out the Running Shoe Matcher yet, go to runningshoematcher.com. This is a really cool tool I built that matches you with the best running shoe for you based on your answers to five questions. So we'll look at if you want a daily trainer, a tempo shoe, a race day shoe, or a recovery shoe, whether you like your shoes soft or firm, and we will match you with the best shoe for you. So it's live right now. You can go check it out at runningshoematcher.com. So first of all, what is a rotation? If you're watching this video, you most likely know, but the rotation is that collection of shoes that you pull for on a weekly basis to execute on your training. If you have two pairs of shoes, you have a rotation. And why is a rotation important? Well, that's because studies have shown that rotating through shoes is one of the best ways to avoid injury. That's because when we use shoes with different types of drops, different squishiness of the foams, different stack heights, these are all factors that activate different muscles in our legs. And using only one pair of shoes could result potentially in overtraining if you're running a lot. So using that second and third pair of shoes mixes it up and rounds out those different muscles that we're using. Now the building block for all rotations is the daily trainer. The daily trainer is a shoe that you can reach for every day for those normal miles. Now, if you're training for a marathon or a half marathon, even a 5K or a 10K, this is the shoe that you can lace up no matter what the run is that's on your schedule, that's gonna eat up the bulk of the mileage on your training calendar. Now the daily trainer usually comes in at around $130 to $140. There are some more affordable picks at around $100, but we start to see the prices creep up a little bit. A good daily trainer will be supportive. It will be decently lightweight. For men, that's gonna be below 10 ounces and it should just feel right for you. There is a huge variation in daily trainers. There's some that are firmer like this one here. There's some that are softer. But the key thing here is that you get a daily trainer that works for you because all of that variation means that there's different shoes that work for different types of runners. None of our bodies are the exact same and none of our preferences are the exact same. A good daily trainer will also work for a long run. So if you're doing a marathon or half marathon build, your daily trainer is the shoe that should be able to support that two hour long run as well as those everyday running miles. Now I manage a large rotation and the way that I like to do it is to have one firmer daily trainer as well as a soft daily trainer. So right now I have the Audi Zero SL as my firmer daily trainer, and then I have the Nike Pegasus. While this is not the softest shoe in the world, it is a bit softer and more flexible than the Audi Zero SL. I have this as my softer, more nimble daily trainer. Now the daily trainer is that first shoe that we should reach for when building a rotation. Newer runners usually only have one shoe in the rotation. As we're thinking about adding a second shoe to our rotation, the ideal here is to add something in that complements that first shoe really well. So if you have a solid daily trainer like a Pegasus or Audi Zero SL, even an Asics Nova Blast, the next step might be to add a lightweight shoe that you can do up-tempo work and workouts in, potentially even races. Now for me in my rotation, that would be something like the Hoka Mach. I also have the New Balance Rebel v3 and the brooks hyperion max these are all shoes that you could use for everyday training but i prefer to just mix them in when i want to go a bit faster that's going to be the key here with adding the second shoe it's something that can support that faster work so when adding the second shoe, what I would do is look at what is working from that first pair of shoes that you have. For example, if you have that Adidas Audi Zero SL, do you like how firm it is? Do you like the weight of it? Do you like the way that it doesn't have a huge rocker? And then think about in your second shoe, do you want to try a shoe with the rocker or do you want to just stick with what you know is working well, which is a firmer and low profile shoe? And then if we're going down that path, I would say if you want something that's non-rocker, but firmer and snappy, go for something like the Adidas Takumi Sen. Whereas if you want something that's a bit soft, 
softer underfoot, a bit more rocker, but still lightweight, then go for the Hoka Mach 5. So that's really the decision tree for every single shoe we add. We're gonna look at what do we have in our rotation that's working well? What do we want to add into our rotation where there are gaps? And what are the new things that we're looking for when we're adding this new shoe? So what is that use case? Is it gonna be racing? Is it gonna be training? Is it gonna be recovery running? So after we have those two shoes in our rotation, the daily trainer and that lightweight tempo shoe, the third shoe I consider adding is the race day shoe. Now, this is the king of your rotation, right? This is gonna be what you pull for for races. And once you start to do structured training, this is the one that you're gonna to wanna to go for. These types of shoes typically have carbon fiber plates. They're about $200 or more, so it is quite the investment. And they have these soft, bouncy, Piba-based foams. Because they're high price tag, you are gonna to wanna to find something that works for you. There are a few shoes out there that tend to work well for runners. One of them here is the Nike Vaporfly 3. The other one is the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3, but there are dozens of other options on the market. Now, the challenge here is that a lot of these are not sold in specialty running stores. So it's kind of hard to get them on foot if you want to try some out But what you can do is order them online from a place that has a good return policy Like a fleet feet or a running warehouse try them out around your house Try them out on a run if you can do that under the return policy and see if it works for you They are much different to adjust to than your daily trainer or your tempo shoe Just because they do alter your mechanics with the rocker and the plate But they can help shave a few minutes off of your race PRs if used properly and if used after after executing on a good training build. And the great thing about this race day shoe as well is that you can use it for long runs as well as any workouts where you wanna have a bit more snap and speed from this carbon fiber plate and super foam. I personally like to use non-plated shoes for those use cases, but it is a great training tool for those days where you just want a little bit more from your shoe. All right guys, the last shoe that I would consider adding to a training rotation is the recovery running shoe. Now, this is going to be one of the most specialized shoes in your toolkit in addition to that race day shoe. This is the shoe that you only really wanna pull for on your slowest days. Right here, I have the Asics Gel Nimbus 25. I've also had in the past year the Saucony Triumph 20 and the Saucony Endorphin Shift 3 filling this role. A great time to add this shoe is when you ramp up your mileage a lot and want something for those very slow miles or for those days where you're super fatigued after hard workouts. These are not the most versatile shoes. So again, you'd wanna add this only as your fourth or fifth shoe in your rotation once you have a daily trainer, maybe even a second daily trainer, a workout shoe and a race day shoe. This can help improve recovery if you are starting to run 50, 60, 70 plus miles per week and want something that takes that load off a little bit. All right guys, so there you go. That is is my approach to building an ideal training rotation. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for liking and subscribing, and I'll make sure to keep you up to date on the latest and greatest in the world of performance running.